Hello, this is Bishop Price. How are you doing? Thank you for watching. We're going to talk about the importance of great faith, importance of faith. Of course, if you want to be dealing with God and you need faith, if I had my choice, I would want mine to be great. And there are some times in the scripture where Jesus uh, made reference to great faith. Father, in Jesus' name, lead us and guide us in this teaching on faith and help us get to the highest level of faith in Jesus' name. All right. Matthew 8 and 8 reads, uh, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. If I am a man upon the authority, having soldiers under me, I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another comma he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. I mean, it's like this man got a pretty good grip on how faith operates in, in authority and speaking. And then in verse 10, he says, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no not in Israel. And uh, Jesus referred to Israel, uh, his own people, that he hadn't found it. And, you know, he made a reference in Luke 18, when the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith uh, on this earth. Uh, many people do not have uh, biblical understanding of faith. And what we're going to try to do here today is hopefully, prayerfully, get you to understand what faith is, what faith ain't. And, you know, um, faith ain't a lot of things we think it is. And faith is a lot of things we <laughs> that it ain't, that we think it ain't. But it does have to do with authority, speaking, sending. You know, he sent his word and healed them, you know. Uh, giving your uh, the word a destination. Give it uh, an assignment. Giving the word something that you wanted to work in your pleasure. We'll get into that a little later. But understand that Jesus did not find great faith even among his own people. Seemed like those that was on the outside uh, knew how to operate in the power of God in expectation, and they received things uh, faster than his own people. You know, uh, people of great faith, uh, according to the word of God, people of great faith uh, will inherit the kingdom. They will. They're going to be crowned with the crown of life. Uh, Jesus said in Revelations uh, 2 and 10, uh, be faithful unto death and I give you a crown of life. And, and too many people are in and out of faith. But those that, that really have great faith, uh, what the Bible calls the faithful, the faithful, they're full of faith. They're steadfast. They're unmovable. There are some people right now, uh, I'm talking about with great faith, that they're in there with God through the thick, thin, suffering, denial, rejection. Those we call the faithful, great faith. But those that are willing to you know, be faithful even unto death. Job said um, in the book of Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. That scripture's up on, on the screen now. And the faithful will go through 
rough stuff and have the ability, the grace, because you can't have faith without grace, and have the ability to be grace to go through it. Now, great faith means great grace to endure things and to be steadfast with God. That's one aspect of faith I want to tell you about. Be faithful unto death. He'll give you a crown of life. Be faithful. I'll be right back. Hello, everyone. This is again Troy Price on Troy Price TV. Did I even, I forgot the mission to tell you, we got an app. We got an app. You'll see it right there. I think it says Troy Price Beers, something like that. You, you'll see it. You'll see it on there. Listen, get the app, download on your phone. Every time I come on or there's a, a, a fly or anything, you know, you'll get it. It'll be on your phone. Troy Price TV. On your phone. The app. Get the app. In Jesus' name. All right, we're back. I want great faith. I mean, there's weak faith, dead faith, little faith. I don't want that. I want great faith. And I hope you do too. Um, Matthew 15 and 28. Uh, then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Again, here's another great, great. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now, now, that is a powerful statement. Jesus tells the woman her faith was great. She was a woman of great faith. He commends her. He celebrates her. And there is revelation knowledge uh, that he said to that woman. Uh, she has strong faith. And God's word translation says, what you wanted will be done for you. Uh, the GNB, what you want will be done. Of course, the King James Version says, be it unto uh, thee, even as thou wilt, W-I-L-T, or uh, it's like, you know, what your, your, your will your will, your desire. And uh, that is an element of great faith uh, that believing and trusting God to such a depth that the power will, will be released to you uh, according to your will <laughs> or your desire. Ain't that something? God's grace, the grace to receive it, the grace to even believe it's possible is, re is released on you according to your faith. Your faith puts a demand on the grace Uh, when I say your faith, your belief in God puts a demand on you believing the willingness of God to do it or the ability of God to do it. Your, your faith has got to come out, you know, because faith works by love. And when you know that God loves you, amen. Remember now, that'll be on the screen, faith, faith works by love. Uh, that's where the grace, you can believe the willingness of God to do it for you. That, that is faith and grace. You can't separate them. She had enough faith and grace, Matthew 15 and 28, to believe God would do it as she will. Of course, and he came back and confirmed it. Your faith, great is your faith. It's going to be done as you will allow the power of God to be released. Know that your, your will is working in your faith. 
notice your will is working uh, through your faith. I mean, uh, Jesus said in Matthew 9, 29, uh, be it unto you according to your faith. According to your faith will it be done to you. You receiving the blessings are in direct proportion to how much faith you exercise the living God. That's why you better get in faith. Faith without works is dead. If you don't walk in faith, if you don't live by faith, you're going the only way you're gonna receive from God is in faith. And it's gonna be done in direct proportion. How you deal with God is how you're gonna receive from God. How you measure out faith toward God is how it's gonna be measured back. That's I mean. Come on, Luke 6 and 38, I believe that's it. In direct propulsion. Did you know your faith does what you will? And if you don't believe, if you don't will nothing, nothing will happen. You know, we got to take on the promises of God. They are, they are for us. I know they're for us. Or the Bible says, in Galatians 3 and 14, that the blessings of God or Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, through faith. Now, again, you're going to receive the blessings of Abraham, the promise of the Spirit, what? Through faith. And if your faith is not great, if you won't will this thing, it won't happen. Your faith operates on your will. Whew, that's a whole nother Bible set. Listen, we'll be right back. Great faith. I'm back. Listen, wow. I want to encourage you, ask you for your financial support. I'm looking for 100 people to support uh, this ministry uh, that are getting, that's getting blessed. I want you to be one of those 100 uh, that are supporting this ministry, tithes, offering, seeds, so on. And so it's the time now to, to give, to give back. You can do it through, oh, I guess you can mail it. You can do it. We got a mailing address. We got the cash app. Uh, we got, uh, I guess, PayPal. Just some things. There'll probably be some things on the screen as I'm talking. But please, ma'am, sir, uh, help me spread the gospel. Help me go, not only to go win souls, but to keep these souls saved and have them going forward in the work of God. Mail to me. Write to me. Bishop Troy Price, 2407 Fat Avenue, Newberry, South Carolina. You can write your prayer request. We would love to hear from you. May God bless you. All right. I want great faith. I know you want great faith. We all want great faith. Let's get it. Okay, let's get great faith. We don't want average faith. We don't want just, you know, mediocre. We want to get to the top. Now. Uh, we talked a little bit before we talked about, you know, being faithful, being faithful unto death. I just want to kind of recap on that uh, about, uh, you know, being, you know, faithful to God, being faithful to God. Um, we can't say enough about it, uh, willing to suffer for your convictions and stand, having done all to stand, stand. And uh, you can't say enough about having great faith, having deep-rooted convictions. Uh, uh, you don't have to call everybody a devil that don't agree with you. Lord, have mercy on us. We don't have to uh, fall out, per se, as to be negative or de de divisive. I mean, the Word of God is going to do what it's going to do. Uh, but you have to, you know, draw a line and make decisions. And uh, those that don't particularly agree with you, uh, everybody need to be led uh, by their own conscience. And uh, serving, you know, faith, faith is a personal thing. 
Uh, people need to be led by their own mind and how they feel about things, you know. So uh, you don't want to go around uh, saying everybody's a devil because they don't have your convictions. Now, in, in saying all of that, I want to get to Psalm 101 and verse number 6. Psalms 101 and verse number 6. Uh, God's eyes are always on the faithful. God's eyes are always on the faithful. One more time. God's eyes are always on the faithful. 106, excuse me, 101 in verse number 6. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. I love that when he says, my eyes shall be always upon the faithful. I mean, continual care, protection, provision, watch. He's watching over you. He's watching over, your, over his word. God's eye continually uh, on the faithful of the land. You know, God will look upon you with favor if you're faithful. God will approve you. His eyes are constantly on. <laughs> to show himself strong to you. That's why God, when you honor God, God will honor you. And God will have, you know, if he if he's constantly got you in his eyes, you're the apple. When God said a faithful one, somebody like the one that really working with him. Are, are you really one of the ones that really working with God? You're not one of the ones that just men pleasers, entertainers. But God's eyes are really on the salt of the earth. People that are trying to make being a part of change. People that are trying to uh, learn, do, live well, pleasing to God. God's eyes on the faithful. People that are going to serve as light, as salt, as ambassadors. Those that are, that are walking, you know, in faith to God and believing that their life is making a difference. As if God himself told him to do what they're doing and they're doing it as if God is standing in front of them, uh, giving them a thumbs up. You know, are you faithful? Do you want the eyes of God to be on you? I hope so. I hope so. God wants to have his eyes on you. And I'm telling you, you may not get a lot of notoriety down here. You may not get fame and fortune. But God's eyes are on you, according to Psalm 101 and verse number 6. Be faithful, because God's eyes are on you. You could be watching quality content like this every day on Facebook. That's right, Troy Price TV, every day. You could be watching quality content like this on Facebook. YouTube every day. Troy Price TV, Facebook, Troy Price TV, YouTube. You could be watching quality content like this on Periscope. Troy Price TV. Listen, download, like, share, subscribe. Social media, welcome Troy Price TV. Praise him. All right, we're back. I got some faith affirmations I want to just give. You know, faith is something people say, well, how can I get more faith? You know, faith comes by hearing. But, uh, you know, you're going to go through some times with your faith because you got to grow. So you're not going to get it all together at one time. Faith is like a seed, grain of a mustard seed. Uh, don't worry about the type of seed. But it's, when it's referring to seed, it's talking about it's going to grow, uh, you know. 
You, you, you need to feed your faith. You need to allow it to grow. And you face uh, discouragement and time when it get rough, you know, in, in your affliction, uh, when you was in distress. That's when your faith is going to be enlarged when you go, uh, you know, go through it the right way. Surround yourself with uh, good, uh, faithful people. Uh, get your confessions, you know, and uh, make faith talking a, a, a habit, something you do every day, and you're going to see your faith grow uh, by leaps and bounds. Here's some affirmations. I will not surrender to my fears. Isaiah 41 and 10. You'll see it on the screen. That's number one. I will not surrender to my fears. Number two, I will take one day at a time in obedience. I will live uh, the, the present moment and not worry about the future. And you can read that in Matthew 6, 25 through 34. You can read that. But don't don't surrender and don't, don't get overwhelmed by the moment. Take I will take one day at a time, day at a time. I will live in the very present and not bite off and chew about tomorrow. Number three, do you say you want to have great faith? Great faith, you got to keep it in the moment. I claim the biblical freedom to trust God, and uh, God is powerful enough to work all things for my good. I will not be preoccupied with worst-case scenario thinking. Romans 8 and 28, you know, God working all the stuff for my good. You, you see it. Don't get caught up in the worst-case scenario. No, 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 no. All right, number four, God is my provider. I will draw confidence and strength from how he has provided for me in the past. I will continue to look to him for the future. That's Philippians 4, 19. You see that. And my God shall, you know it. You see it there. Number five, I will do what is within my control to the best of my ability and leave the rest to God. God's hands are capable, you know, to, to uh, and his promises are for me. God's hands are capable. Capable to do what? Work it out. God's hands are capable to work it out, and his promises are for me. Hebrews 10 and 23. You see the scripture right there. Number six, I am not alone. God seeks, sees my struggle. And will come alongside me. He gonna see about me. I will look for signs of his presence and grace today. Deuteronomy 31 and 6. You see the scripture. You're not alone. Number seven. I am loved by God. That's Romans 8, 38 through 39. I am loved by God. All right. That was uh, number seven. This is number eight. I will remember who I am and whose I am. If God is for me, who can be against me? Romans 8 and 31. Number nine. I do not expect my path to always be easy. I'm very equipped and very able. I will grow through every situation and experience that is james 1 verses 2 through 4 i will grow through everything number 10 i am called to be brave yes i am that's the first corinthians 16 verse 13 i am called to be brave and the very last one i have you know it can't have great faith without saying this scripture. I can do all things through Christ who will strengthen me or who gives me the strength and the ability. That's Philippians 4 and 13. Couldn't have picked a better scripture to end this teaching on. I love y'all. Father, touch, save, and deliver. Holy Spirit, Convict our heart to righteousness 
and bear witness of all of this truth to those that are watching right now. Listen, I hope, I pray, you will be a person of great faith. Until next time, we love you. Say your time is up, and our time is now.